and welcome back. In this tutorial we are going to create a organizational chart for the Orville, a sci-fi TV show in Google Sheets. Now it's a relatively simple process, however there are a couple of gotchas along the way that I want to highlight, go through some best practices and also show you how to export an interactive version of your organizational chart into a website or even perhaps a Google slide. So what we have here already is our organizational chart. We'll move over to our working sheet here. Now, I have a link in the description below for a starter sheet for you to play along. I encourage you to pause the video right now, go into the description, make a copy of this sheet and strap in and follow along with the tutorial. Okay, so now that I have my fresh copy of my organizational chart starter sheet, I'm going to show you where I got my source information from. I think I got it from a Reddit article that popped up. Yeah, you can see in the URL at the top here, it's from Reddit, but this is an amazing organizational structure sheet. Now, there are some limitations to creating organizational charts in Google Sheets. Now, we won't be able to create something as amazing as this in Google Sheets, but it is good for a basic business structure or a file structure that you want to display in a sheet. So let's head back over to our video sheet here. So to generate our organizational chart, we need two mandatory things, the position and then who the person reports to. So if you can see here in our column A here, we've got the current position of the person in our organizational chart. And then in column C, this is who they report to. Now in column B, I've got the name of the person here. I thought this is fairly useful information uh, that we might be able to add in an interesting way into our organizational chart in a moment. Now when you're creating your charts, it's pretty good practice to write in the raw names here. And I haven't intentionally put things on new lines. Uh, right now I've just got the formatting to text wrapping here. So if I could extend this out, this will all clear out into a single line. I'm just shrinking it down so we can put in our large organizational chart. So the first person in our list, if we have a look over here, is, is the commanding officer, Captain Mercer. So if we go back here, we've got their name here and they don't report to anyone, not in our organizational chart. Obviously they report to their fleet command, but <laughs> that's a different story. Underneath them is their executive officer, Commander Grayson, and they report to the commanding officer. And then Underneath them, they've got the second officer, Lieutenant Commander Bordas. They kind of report to the executive officer, but also report to the commanding officer. Now, it's up to us to decide how we want to display this, but you can see in this chart here that it's all in a straight line, one after the other. So we kind of want to keep that flow. So we have them reporting back up the chain of command like this. Let's jump into the, the pretty part and create our organizational chart. So we're probably not going to add in a header here. We just want the organizational chart information. So we want to start from this A3 of the first person in our organizational chart. And I'm going to hold shift down and select C23. Now you could drag this range down to a bunch of empty spaces like this. And if you wanted to change or add people in future, then, then they will automatically populate your chart. Let's just try that again. I'm going to click A3. I'm going to go all the way down. Let's say we increase our organizational chart to 100. That's going to be ungainly, but it is what it is. Now we can click on this chart button for insert charts here, or we can go up to insert and select charts, which is what we'll do. Okay, so our little chart window has moved here. So I'm going to click it and just drag it over into a bit more of a logical place. And then I'm going to select the chart type first and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you can see when I hover over this, we've got organizational chart. Okay, so our organizational chart looks a little bit weird at the moment with all these different people up the top. Why is that? So we've got our range data range here from A3 to C100. Yep, that's what we intended to have our data range in. Now our ID is the person to, to be displayed on the chart and that's correct. That's going to be this A3 ID here. Now in column B, we've got the name as the parent. So who the person is reporting to, but that's coming up as Captain Mar Mercer, Commander Grayson, Lieutenant Commander Bortus, etc. That's not right. What we actually need is column C, the person they're reporting to. So let's go ahead now and change that. I'm going to click on the parents and go down to the C3 here and click on this. Now we're starting to get a organizational chart that looks a bit more like what we need. At the moment, it's hard to see. I'm going to zoom back out again 
to about 90 and I'm going to drag this across so we can fit some more stuff in here. Now one optional item that we can add in is also a tool tip. This is when you hover over a organizational chart item, it comes up with a tool tip, a piece of information. So for example, if you have your business organization, you might have the structure and then the name of the person when you hover over it. So let's go ahead and change this tool tip to be the name instead. So I'm going to go to the tool tip and click on this B3 now. Okay, things are looking a bit big. What we can do is go over to our customizer at the moment and select this org drop down menu here. Now I've got a choice of three sizes, small, medium and large. Why don't we change this to small because our organizational chart is quite large at the moment. Now that I've got that size, I'm also going to drag this down to make sure I've got everything included here. Now I haven't got my technicians included very well, but now they are, so that looks a bit better now. I'm not a big fan of the color. It's not very spacey, is it? This select node color is weird. Oh, let me tell you what the select node color does. This is sort of like if you're embedding it into a Google slide or uh, onto an interactive dashboard inside a web page or something like that. If we click on one of these items here, you can see the color changes and it makes it impossible for us to read. So what I might do, I'm going to change our color to a spacey, super cool dark blue. And then I'm going to select our node color to a bit more of a Orville-esque blue here. Okay, so now we're not losing the background color whenever we click on it. Clicking on it doesn't really have any function except for highlighting that section. So say you're in a slide and you've embedded this in a slide, you can click on the person and talk about that person in the slide. That's about its usefulness. Okay, because we dragged everything all the way down to 100, we could actually add a new person into our organizational unit. Now we've got our shuttle bay operator and they're not going to be working 24 seven. They probably got a couple of lackeys working for them. Let's put in a new value here. Now, what are we going to call these people? Now, they're probably, they're in engineering. They're part of the engineering branch. We could call this technician one of Shuttle Bay and you would expect this to appear here. So if I just simply added anything here like cheese, for example, hit tap, you can see that it's opened up and we've got a whole new category of cheese over to the side here. Now, see what happens if I add in technician number one, which would make sense being on the Shuttle Bay operator. I'm just going to copy this and paste this in here. And where's our technician gone? They've vanished. Why aren't they available? Well, simply in an organizational chart, you can't have the same position name. We'll have to change it to something else. So we could put, call this technician and we'll say SB1 for Shuttle Bay 1. We won't give, an, give them a name. They're probably likely to die in the next land mission anyway. Now we are going to reference a parent the shuttle bay operator. Now again, we could copy and paste this in, but what if we change shuttle bay operator to chief lieutenant shuttle bay operator type person instead? Then this wouldn't be updated. Let's go equals, and then I'm going to click on this A21, and that references that shuttle bay operator. And we could change this to shuttle bay operator dude, and that will add in dude here. Okay, we've got SB1. Let's create SB2 for our technicians. Let's see if Google Sheets automatically updates to two for us. Ah, Google Sheets, you genius. Well done. And again, we want to reference this Shadow Bay Operator Dude 2. So equals, click on this, and there we have it. Now you can see down the bottom, this is automatically generated inside our organizational chart. So this means it can be super useful if we embed this into our internal website for our company or even a, a front-facing external website for our company and we have staff changes regularly. All we need to do now is just update these roles here. Now, while we're talking about this, how about I show you how to do that? So what we can do is click on our organizational chart here and then click on these vertical ellipses and then go to the publish the chart. Now we can keep this as interactive and that means that whenever we hover over these items like this, we can see each of the individual names because we've selected this as that, uh, as the, hang on a minute, tooltip 
for the user. So I'll close it again. Cool, let's head back and let's publish the chart. Now we can publish it as just a general link or we can embed the item in an embeddable section inside a WordPress script or inside a website. We're gonna go with the link here because it's easier for me to show you. Keeping it interactive means that you can do those hovering effects and clicking on those items to, to highlight a particular position. And uh, any extra stuff here, we wanna make sure automatically republish when changes are made is occurs and that update process is roughly every five minutes or so. It's not instantaneous, but every five minutes, it's pretty good when you're just changing one or two people in an organization. Okay, let's hit publish now. Are we sure we wanna publish? Yes, we are. We're gonna click okay. And then we're just going to copy this by hitting control C and going into a new tab and I'll show you what happens. We'll hit control V to paste. And there is our organizational chart. Now it's a little bit zoomed out and probably a little bit blurry. What we can do is go back to our organizational chart here and close that. And it's probably due to the size of this. So it's going to try and emulate the size of the screen that we have. So I'm just going to zoom this screen out to say 75. I'm gonna click on the chart again. And we're going to make this chart a little bit bigger to about there. And I'm gonna open up the edit chart back to customize organization to, I think medium is probably gonna be enough. I don't think we'll have enough room for large, no. So we'll stick with medium, that's okay. Let's head back to what we pasted in and we'll just do a refresh. Does it update? There we go. So that was a little bit faster than five minutes, but it did update for us and it looks pretty good now and much easier for us to see. And when we hover over certain items, we can see that the users is there. One last thing, maybe we don't want to see the person's name when we have this hover effect. Maybe we want to include it in our organizational chart information. How do we go about that? Okay, let's go back to our chart and let's head over to this include names below. Now I've left out an empty space here for you to work on and note over on this side here there's uh, references as well, don't delete those. You're going to be working in this section here. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine commanding officer and captain Mercer in a similar way that they have done here in these curved races. So let's uh, zoom in a bit on our screen so you can see what's going on a bit better. Okay. And I might zoom in on this one to 100% too. We can zoom out again, we have the technology. Okay, so we're gonna hit equals and we wanna grab the title first. And if we then add in the other person with an ampersand, so this is sort of, this is a ampersand is used for concatenation. We can add in Captain Mercer, but you can see how he's joined together. We don't want that. We can use the join function as well if you want. That gives you a delimiter. So if we have a look at the instructions here, the delimiter would be a space perhaps, followed by the two values. So commanding officer, comma, oops, comma, their name. But again, that's not particularly great because it's commanding, off, commanding new line officer, Captain Mercer, which is sort of still a bit blurry. We can't even add brackets in here. So we're gonna go back to our ampersand concatenation and we'll keep that equals there and we'll click on commanding officer again this time, hit ampersand, we're going to grab a double quotation mark here, and this time around we're going to hit shift and enter to get a new line. Now you can't see that because it's below here, that's all good. And this will force the text to appear on the next line, and then we're gonna hit ampersand again, and then on that line we're gonna open up a curly brace. So we'll go back behind that, double quotation marks, put in another ampersand here, select the name of the person in that role, and then put in a, another ampersand, because we need to close our curly brace, and we'll put those two there, go back and put those curved brace in there, I've been saying curly brace, I'm a bad human, and then hit enter. And it's asking us if we want to complete all this, yes we do, and now you can see our organizational chart has been populated. Let's do a bit of zooms 
outsing and you can see the organization part chart has been populated nicely here now there's a couple of things I'm not a fan of what about this bridge control here it's just got two curve braces but nothing in it we don't need it for that condition so how are we going to resolve that all right let's head back over here and think about this a bit more so what we might do is let's just delete this in fact let's just take this all the way back up to the top here get rid of that curly brace and we'll put in an if statement up here we will say if the corresponding cell in in column c is equal to an empty cell then we want to generate an empty cell otherwise we want to open up our curly brackets create a new line and then we're going to put in our curve left curve brace close the double quotation marks and then we will put in an ampersand to concatenate and then we'll reference c3 and then we'll put in another ampersand double quotation marks right hand curve brace double quotation marks and then close that beautiful if statement hit tab okay so captain mercer appears on that next line that's what we want let's just drag this down let's just drag this down to 23 cool 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 and now we don't have anything in the name section here so there's security officers so where are they security officers there's nothing underneath them security personnel there's nothing underneath them bridge control down here there's you can't see anything here that's good but anyone who has a name still it's appearing on a new line underneath their role okay i think i've armed you with enough skills to generate your own organizational chart in google sheets if you've enjoyed this tutorial hit that like button and if you want to see more tutorials like this please subscribe until next time